Shalom. I am currently on my way to a freelance gig at NYU. But this morning whenever I got up and I got the boosted board out and got all ready, I didn't check the weather and uh, didn't even realize that it was raining. <laughs> Luckily it's not actively raining so it's not all that wet. So while I'm on my way I wanted to show you something and tell you a quick story about uh, a few months ago this uh, I got an email from this like nationally syndicated like news spot. It goes on like local like it's like a segment in local news stations but they buy the syndication to actually air it and so that's what it is it's called the list and they contacted me and asked if we wanted to do an interview with them about our apartment so we did that and it aired and i'm going to show that to you now we are cody and sarah jensen and this is our 300 square foot apartment in lower east side manhattan that's right, they managed to live and work in just 300 square feet. That's approximately the size of seven king-size beds. It's 100 square feet smaller than the average two-car garage, but they make it work. The first way is by making things multifunctional. Take their couch, for example. The sofa is one, it's a sofa, sit on it. Um, and then it also turns into a queen size bed for whenever guests are over. The couch also works as storage and extra seating. With the coffee table that we have, it turns into a dining room table and we can pull the bench out, put the table in the middle, and then it has seating for six people around it. Their space seems small, but they can still hold a dinner party and have overnight guests. Next, everything in their home has a purpose. If it doesn't have a use in the space, it's not really here. They've gotten rid of knickknacks because they just don't have the room. Any extras are just things that make them happy. It makes it visually pleasing for us, you know, to actually be in the space. So, you know, not, not everything has to have a function, but it is useful. Which means no impulse buying. It's really just thinking about the why and the what for each area and then finding the right stuff for that space. Finally, mix creativity with practicality. I think the kind of the beauty of a small space is that you have to be creative. And so I've never put that much thought into what furniture I bought before. They have a high-end Murphy bed that fits with their style and can be folded up when they aren't using it. When you have 300 square feet, it's um, important to protect your floor space as much as possible. Yeah. And so getting things off of the floor and onto the walls um, is really important to make a really small space feel bigger. They turned their fireplace into a storage space for Sarah's books and they added a standalone wardrobe for more clothing space. The whole thing is just being intentional, it is that being intentional with every single square foot you have. Living large and 300 square feet is on the top of the list. So yeah, that was uh, fun and what's funny to me about that segment is just the stark contrast in what TV content and what YouTube content looks and feels like. That segment is you know it's obviously cut down for time because it's on, on tv but they use basically the same like footage and i mean they did do an interview with us to kind of bring a unique experience but just the way that it's edited and like the voiceover and everything like that it just feels so old school tv and that's i don't have any like deep commentary on that it's just like that's just funny to me um just the differences in traditional media and YouTube. Another funny thing about that is whenever they asked me to do it, I was like, oh yeah, we could do that. That would be like some good like promotion for our YouTube channel. And so I said, well, if we do it, I want to put like youtube.com slash Cody Jensen on the screen the whole time, which they did. It was in the upper like right hand corner the entire time, but we got absolutely nothing out of that. And it's kind of laughable now that I even thought that it possibly could, because if you think about the people who watch local news, the vast majority of those people aren't going to see a YouTube link at the top of the screen and be like, oh, I should go check out their channel. <laughs> but oh well, even though we didn't get any like promotional whatever out of it, still a uh, fun experience. All right, well now I have to go uh, film an event.
set up for the event when I'm on my lunch break now and I never really know what we're shooting before I show up and sometimes it's really boring um, but today seems like it's gonna be really interesting because it is a conversation with Roxanne Shantae who is a old school hip hop artist who I heard her story once and I don't remember where I heard it if it was in a movie or a documentary or something but basically she was a female rap artist kind of unknown someone came out with a track called Roxanne Roxanne which is her name she came out with a basically a diss track or a response track to that song and that kind of like made her like name known so that story and her life was actually made into a Netflix documentary and that Netflix documentary is out now and so this is a discussion with her about her life and whatever but after it's over I'll report back and let you know how it went <laughs> pigeons he has been I don't know how long he's been here like taking care of pigeons and gathering donations to feed them but whenever Sarah and I visited New York in like 2014 I believe I actually have a picture of him basically right there in that same spot so he has a years long relationship with these pigeons okay well now I have to go shoot this event with the shoot and I misspoke earlier and said that the movie on Netflix was actually a documentary. It is not a documentary, it's an actual like biopic um, called Roxanne Roxanne and it's out on Netflix now. I'm very intrigued to go uh, watch it now that I've been to an event with her talking about her life. It seems very uh, interesting. She said a lot of really funny things, but my, one of my favorite things she said was somebody was asking about what she would uh, recommend or like what advice she would give to uh, up and coming artists, people who are musicians and stuff now, what she would say to them. And she gave a bunch of like actual practical advice about the licensing and like all that type of stuff. And she said, she said, now that is barring that his stuff is actually good. He said, if he can't sing, then you need to tell him he can't sing. My boosted remote just died. The boosted board has plenty of battery, but the remote died, so now I have to push. But what she said was, if he, if, back in the 80s, whenever there were artists up and coming, if they weren't good, you would just tell them, bro, your music is whack, you need to do something else. She's like, nowadays, people are way too afraid to hurt people's feelings. And this is my favorite part that she said. She said, uh, you may be trying not to hurt their feelings, but what you may actually may be doing is hurting their destiny. Because if you actually tell them that they're not good, then they may be able to be great at something else. I made it back. The thing that sucks about the boosted remote is that it doesn't actually have a battery level indicator for how much life is left on the remote. It just gives you a green light and then all of a sudden it's red and then it's dead in like five minutes. But hearing Roxanne speak today is actually a really good uh, segue into tomorrow's podcast. If you didn't know, Sarah and I started a podcast called Deeply Curious. It goes up every Saturday. You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, on Google Play, Stitcher, all those things. You can also get it at podcast.codyjensen.com. But tomorrow's podcast is all about music and pop music and the science of why we like things, repetition, and we uh, dive into that. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe. If you're not, we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel. We also do podcasts on Saturday. Sarah makes videos about books every Tuesday and most Thursdays over on hers. So thank you guys for watching, and I guess we'll see you tomorrow at the podcast.